Hey, what's up guys? Tuki here, I'm back again with another episode of my San Jose Sharks franchise mode series right here on NHL 20. And in this episode, we begin our first season at the helm of this team. The last episode, while more of a setup episode, did have a very important question tacked on to it at the end, and that was uh, whether or not you guys wanted me to sign Patrick Marlowe in real life, the Sharks, didn't bring him back, but they have brought back Joe Thornton, and I left it up to you. And overwhelmingly, you said yes. Here's the thing, though. I also talked about how I don't like signing a ton of free agents at the start, but I was looking at one particular defenseman as to whether or not we should bring him in as well. And I made that judgment call. So ultimately, the lineups that you're going to see here, I had to tinker around with it a lot, but with two free agent additions... This is what we have, and I am very excited for this upcoming season. Let's take a look at the team. First and foremost, the line chemistry. <laughs> now, I know, Marcus Sorensen, Patrick Marlowe, and Evander Kane, in theory, isn't the ideal first line, but a plus five is the highest you can get. It is nearly a perfect line in terms of of you know strategy fits and how this team is set up if evander kane's dump carry bias and energy efficiency bias was green it would literally be a perfect line so i am very intrigued to see what this top line can do because in theory mark and Sorensen's playing like an 84 you have patrick marlowe apparently playing like an 87 and evander kane's going to be playing like a 90 overall so i can't wait to see what happens here, but it's amazing that that's the combination that sees us get a plus five. Of course, you have Sniper, Playmaker, and Power Forward. The second line, originally I said I wasn't going to drop Thomas Hurdle down to the second line because he is the only guy in our top six who actually is listed as a first line forward, but it was worth it because he's a better fit on the second line next to Logan Couture and Timo Meyer, which again, they all get a plus three which is insane. And then we have plus ones throughout the bottom six. Kevin LeBanc, Joe Thornton, and Melker Carlson. And the fourth line of Lucas Radil, Barclay Goodrow, and Antti Swamala, who at least fit as the grinders. And of course, if you look at ice time allocation, for the most part, the fourth line isn't going to be used that much. So at the very least, when they are used, plus ones. And the scheme fits are decent. Swamala's not as good of a fit as the other two. But... It, it took a little bit of tinkering around to end up with that. I'd rather have Thornton on the third line than Logan Couture, even though they'd both be a plus three. And obviously, I'm not going to ruin that plus five. I can't use this same combination of Sorensen, Marlowe, and Kane and still have it be a plus five. That's because of what line they're on and how it matches what the coach wants from a top line. So the offense looks good. This is the defense. Two plus fives. Ben Hutton is that defenseman that I was talking about. But two plus fives and a plus one. I know Hutton and Heed is not the ideal first pairing. But think of it as load management if you want to. Think of it as we're a kind of power play specialist of a team. But that's too good to pass up. Hutton and Heed with a plus five. Dylan and Burns both with a plus five. So Burns is going to be playing like a 96 overall. And then Eric Carlson with Mark Edward Vlasic. So in terms of where people are playing, it doesn't necessarily line up. I get it. Vlasic and Carlson as the third pairing. It might be diminishing returns and might not make it the plus five worth it. But this is at least worth testing out. And for the record, the... Ben Hutton contract. I mean, he is very well-rounded. We changed him to a DFD, but he is signed for this year at $1.75 million. Patrick Marlowe signed for $1.1 for this year as well. So I am very excited about what this team can do. We'll see what happens with Martin Jones and Aaron Dell, but even the power play units, I mean, look at that. Burns, Couture, Hurdle, Carlson, Kane, LeBanc, Thornton, Marlowe, Heaton, Meyer. This team really has no excuse to not lead the league in goals. <laughs> it really is going to come down to the defense. 
but the fact that we have a forward pair on a plus five or a forward line on the first, you know, on the first line that has a plus five, and you know, two plus fives on defense, I am so excited to see what this team can do. And again, I know it's a risk to have Hutton and Heed there, but we're gonna see what they can do, and this could end up being a pretty damn good season for us, at least, I hope. In terms of our ratings, uh, let's take a look at that really quickly, and aside from that, this team is good to go. But in terms of our ratings, 86, 90, and an 80. Obviously, you can't factor in what Calgary's lines are right now. They're running some younger players. It's preseason still, so we'll see what the ratings ultimately are. But I, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I mean, it would be great... In a series like this, winning in the first season or two before some of our you know better players retire and re and or regress would be great, and then of course being able to stay in a competitive place also really would help the situation here. Uh, I just want to double check our scouts to make sure I remembered to fix that. I'm pretty sure I did, and I did. I have one else fencing coach and one EBEL coach normally or scout. Normally I don't have uh, either, but we'll uh, we'll go for that for this, uh, this point in time. So there we go. We are set. Let's see just how uh, how big of a factor the line chemistry can have at this point in time. And the one thing that could disrupt it, injuries are on. I'm a little bit concerned about that. To be honest, I'm tempted to at least you know drop the consistency a little bit more. But we will see what happens. We start off our season against Vegas, a home and home, because the hilarious <laughs> after what happened in the postseason. But there you see how we compare to the Golden Knights. They have a better offense, we have a better defense, they have better goaltending. It's going to be really interesting to see how Martin Jones is able to do. And you know what? I, I want to take a quick look at some teams. Maybe we'll look once we go further into the season. But I want to see how some teams are, you know, kind of shaping up. Like, for example, okay, the Ducks are smart. They're running Sam Steele on the fourth line. But I've seen instances of teams playing guys on the fourth line that you wouldn't think they'd be playing there. So I am intrigued to see just where they uh, where they have people. And there aren't any crazy examples like having Eric Carlson as third-pairing defenseman from the first two teams uh, that we've checked. The Rangers are another interesting one to see where they play Kako. But he is currently up on the top line with Panarin and Zibanejad which is pretty crazy, and we'll, we'll keep an eye on this situation. Adam Fox is ultimately in as well. Let's get going here, shall we? Let's see if my hopes and dreams of this team performing at a high level because of those boosts that I had to really... I spent at least a half an hour kind of tinkering around because, unfortunately, you can't change player types from that edit lines menu. You have to go to the edit player thing. So there's a lot of menu work to try and optimize this. As Jacob Middleton in the AHL ends up getting hurt. We'll take him out. That's not a big deal. Barclay Clidrow was roughed up, but he won't miss any game time. As we have four straight wins after dropping our season opener. Timo Meyer with a slight injury. Uh, we will go with head coach replaces player. It's going to be Johnny Brodzinski, who is the healthy scratch. And Hayden Flurry is on waivers. You know, there's really no reason to not take him. I think that brings us up to a full 50 contracts. But high top 6 out of the 75, 23 years old. Fits the third defensive pair. He's a penalty killer. You know, there's really no reason not to claim him. Sure, we'll take Hayden Flurry. Oh, damn, you know what? Wow, we just got smoked. The one thing, uh, the one uh, thing that I meant to check here, the one thing that was worth checking is where other free agents signed, if at all. And hopefully I didn't sim too far. I often get a little bit too sidetracked with looking at, you know, what lies ahead. Yuhan Lamico and Michael Haley to Detroit. Dion Phaneuf went to Carolina. Ronaldo to Anaheim. Emerson Adam, Matt Molson, Lucas Spiza. Pyarvi to Anaheim, DSP back to Anaheim, Detroit's going physical apparently, <laughs> Drew Stafford, Brower, Jamie McGinn to Winnipeg, along with Bergman, Taylor, Toby Reeder to Columbus, Dan Girardi to Ottawa, Pominville to Tampa, Justin Williams to Ottawa, Joe Morrow to Anaheim, Vanek to Columbus, Brian Boyle to Detroit, and of course our two signings, Ben Hutton and Patrick Marlowe. So just to get a look at that, I'm glad all of that information did not disappear. What we need to take a look at now 
is what's going on with Hayden Flurry. And the good thing is it did put him right in the AHL. So you can just get him to play. So that works for me. I mean, that's a low-risk pickup for us, for sure. And Johnny Brodzinski, by the way, fits right in on that second line right now. It's still a plus one. He's on a line with Couture and Hurdle. Only played there for the one game, but I'm perfectly fine with that. I do wonder if it'd be a little bit better if he was a playmaker or a sniper. Normally, though, two ways and power forwards work well with one playmaker and one sniper, so I'm not too concerned. So down in the AHL, it's going to be Dalton Prout. Now, I did go best lines to fix this, I believe, after... Uh, after making signings. When I called somebody up, I accidentally, you know, assigned best lines, so that kind of sucks. But we can take a minute to double-check this. Clifton wasn't too important to use. Kelman's under contract, but he's, he's 25. He's not going to get that much better. Only way someone like Kelman gets better uh, in, you know, with my save files and everything is if he has a good season now that he's uh, come over to North America. We're actually good with the forwards. Never mind. So it's going to be Dalton Prout who ends up taking a seat. Hayden Flurry will replace him. And no minuses. So Hayden Flurry and Trevor Carrick now on a pairing for the San Jose Barracuda. I'll take it. Thank you very much, Carolina. And we'll see what happens. Couture, nine points through seven games. We are atop the division in the early stages of the season. We have a long way to go, though. See if we can get to November 1st without too much more tinkering to do. Although, looking at the draft class really quickly, it is what you would expect. Lafreniere at the top. Again, Braden Ortiz, and we'll see where the rest of these guys go. Holt confirmed at a medium elite. And we'll actually get Jacob Middleton back. That Barracuda team hasn't won a single game so far this year. And I think it's going to be Tony Sund who takes a seat. Another guy. There were a lot of players. I feel like a, a higher amount of players this year that came over from Sweden and Finland than we normally see. But yeah, we're going to play Jacob Middleton there, although that pairing is not going to work. That works. So the Carrick Flurry pairing was uh, shortly lived. God, I love those two plus fives, especially you know, as Johnny Brodzinski's hurt. Well, Jesus. Okay, that second line left wing spot's a bit cursed. Especially being told that it's rare to see players do well. Or to see the plus fives, not to see players do well. But to get plus fives is, you know, apparently somewhat difficult to do. Just everything lined up for us there. Again, you basically need all greens and for it to be a perfect fit. Oh, don't make me do this. Damn it. I'm going to have to add... Did I not say to change it for every line? I really don't want to do this. <laughs> I really don't want to have to add Timo Meyer to every single line, but apparently that is what we're going to have to do. Although that's fine. Is it just shootout line now? Three on three. All right, let's get Timo Meyer there. But it is amazing, though. It kind of overshadowed by, you know, the fact that the line chemistry is off the charts right now. Patrick Marlowe is back on this team, and obviously we're hoping for the best. I mean, he's absolutely in a you know a situation to succeed right now, being alongside Evander Kane, who is benefiting very, very well from that extra chemistry. How's uh, and even Sorensen? Seven points in eight games. If he can do that, we're in a damn good spot. Damn good spot indeed. I guess my only question, though, and time will tell, is whether or not people are going to complain about ice time. Jonathan Dolan was apparently roughed up for the CUDA, but they are fine. Oh, Patrick. All right. About a two-week injury for Patrick Marlowe, which certainly has me worried about injuries, and we are going to have no choice but to call up a center, preferably a playmaking center who can just fit right onto that line. It might end up being Dylan Gambrell, but he is affected by waivers. So... Prolific score in his pro career, but yeah, it's not going to be him. It's going to be Kelman. Why not? He's not affected by waivers. I don't have to worry about changing player types. He's pretty much the perfect guy to use. So let's do it. Joel Kelman. Or is, would it be Yoel? I guess it would be Yoel with him having, I'm thinking like Yoel Eriksson-Eck, essentially. So Kelman, congratulations. 
you keep it at a plus three, which isn't bad. If those two red X's were yellow, it would still be a plus five. But regardless, we keep it at a plus three. He'll be playing like a 75, so Evander Kane's going to have to do some heavy lifting there. But it shouldn't be it shouldn't be that bad. It's a relatively short-term injury. And we'll see what we can do as we beat the Habs, we beat the Leafs. Final game of that Atlantic stretch, and we lose in a shootout to Boston. So 8-4-1 and one through the opening month of the season. Not bad at all. Are we still in first? We're not the Oilers. I, I feel justified in that, uh, <laughs> that shock. The Oilers are currently in first in the division, although we have a game at hand. Brent Burns leading this team in points as a defenseman, although he does play as a forward on the power play. But just looking here, Kane's been great. Hurdle doing well. Thornton, point total is good. Plus minus is shockingly a minus three, but that's okay. I mean, we already have five guys in double digits. Marlowe, nine points in ten games. Uh, LeBanc's doing fine. The fourth line not contributing much offensively. Melker Carlson only having two points is surprising for a third liner. But I can put up with that. And then defensively, I mean, yeah, Burns and Carlson still doing well. Only two of Burns' points have been on the power play, though, which is pretty surprising. And Heed and Hutton, minus three, but I'm not totally upset about that. It's okay. I mean, obviously, it's just, you know, how much ice time are they getting a night, essentially, is the issue. Whew. 21 and 22. So Carlson's getting 17 minutes a night, which, in fairness, isn't necessarily a bad strategy until we get to the playoffs. Burns is still playing 23 minutes a night on that second pairing. And then Vlasic, 15 minutes. So like I said, kind of view it as load management for Eric Carlson, which is a strategy a lot of people are saying they should use in real life anyway to make sure he's healthy for the playoffs. The issue has been that Martin Jones isn't getting it done. God, I, I still love it. It was just a couple of years ago, people were like, ah, oh, the Bruins kept the wrong goalie. They should have traded Rask and kept Martin Jones. I don't know, I don't know about that one. And unfortunately, while he does have a Stone Cold approved 316 GAA, that save percentage needs to improve. Aaron Dell, though, has been great. He's only faced 26 shots, though. <laughs> so we'll see if Martin Jones can turn it around. Still winning and everything. The team in front of him, while it's not the highest overall ratings across the board, you can pretty much pinpoint our issues. You know, it, it's in Martin Jones' direction, at least. We won't say it's all him. Just mostly. Just mostly. As Kelman was roughed up, but he's good to go. Back-to-back -back wins over Winnipeg and Vancouver. A huge win over Chicago. And offensively, we're doing very well. We lose in a shootout. Oof. We get crushed by Nashville. And that sees Patrick Marlowe healthy enough to return to the lineup. How did Kelman do? D you know? <laughs> Six points in nine games. You have Sorensen, who went up to an 80. It's pretty damn good. Vander Kane, I mean, 14 goals in 19 games. That's pretty damn good. Kelman, you did very well. Very, very well. But Patrick Marlowe's back, and that top line's back to a plus five. Very happy to see that. That third line, though, I had a feeling there was still a plus minus issue. Carlson isn't exactly gelling as I'd want him to. I could move Radil. I wonder if I can move Radil to a two-way. I mean, that fourth line's doing pretty well. I'm going to give Carlson a little bit more time, but I wonder if I were to move Radil to a two-way and change Malker to a grinder, how well that would work. I mean, Radil's not as good of a fit, but it should still be a plus one across the board. It should be. Three points in 19 games. we we got to make a change on that third line, I think. So we're going to swap those two around. We're going to change Malker to a grinder, change Lucas Radil to a two-way, and we're going to see what happens as we lost one nothing in a shootout to the Oilers, which, go figure, I said we were firing on all cylinders, and then we get shut out by Edmonton, of all teams. Although I'm sure Mike Smith is doing well. I would imagine he is the starter over Koskinen. So, wingers, let's go and change Malker Carlson to a grinder again. I wish there was an easier way to do this. There was not. You know, I still wish it was as easy as be, you know, just 
it could be easier. It could be a little bit more simple. I don't think it's also unrealistic to say, hey, Melker, you're not working as a two-way. Let's try being a little bit more physical in your play. Like, I don't think that's, you know, it's unrealistic to change player types. I mean, you know, roles can change. You can be uh, like a certain uh, coach who wanted the Sedins to block shots. John Tortorella. <laughs> what a guy. I'm, you can do whatever you want and ask your players to do whatever you want as a coach. Doesn't mean they're going to listen. Doesn't mean it's going to work. But that's okay. He still got paid a boatload of money. So let's see what effect that had on the lineup. And the answer is a decent one. Okay, it's still a plus one. So we'll see how Lucas Radil is able to do on the third line. Melker is the first guy to be demoted. Defensively, I'll take it, man. Even ratings... I will take it. And again, load management, not necessarily needed for Vlasic, but he's going to be paired with Carlson because Dylan and Burns work really well together. That's looking good. Martin Jones, up to a 906. Very good. I mean, we did go on that winning streak, so it makes sense. But to have 906, you know, goaltending for both goalies, that's, that's just a little bit problematic. But hey, we're making it work for us. We're doing well. We're where we want to be. The better the record, the better for us this year. The goal is to be successful. So I'm happy with what I'm seeing thus far. As we'll see if we can get through the end of the month without any major controversies. We beat Anaheim 5-2. Lose 6-4 to to Detroit. Joachim Blickfield. Blitchfield. Blickfeld. Joachim is hurt. That's okay. Johnny Brodzinski is back, but obviously he's a depth option. We play the Oilers again, and this time we crush them. A 1-0 shootout loss and an 8-1 win. Absolutely ridiculous. And we match that up with getting shut out by Vegas. Uh, Blitchfeld is back. We're going to want to make sure that he is in the lineup. I think it would have been TJ Hensick in the lineup for him. I know Hensick brings a little bit to that line, but I'm not overly worried about that. If the AHL team is able to make the playoffs, I think I'll, you know, I'll dip in and try to optimize line combos and everything. It is time consuming though, as I said. So we'll see if they're a playoff team or whatever. I, I probably should optimize it from the start. Brendan Dillon is going to be out for a week or two. I think it's a little bit over a week. So that will see Simic into the lineup. Now, he is a defensive D, so he should, and he's a left-handed defensive D. He should fit in perfectly there with Burns. It's still a plus one. That's not That's not too bad. It stays a plus one across the board. Okay, what if I do this? Whoo! Okay, Burns and Vlasic work very well. <laughs> Burns and Vlasic work very well, but they got to be on the third pairing. I'll take it. Plus five, Burns and Vlasic. Very good. Carlson and Simic not great fits for that particular line. Wow, and actually, if I were to put Simic with Heed, it would still be a plus five or plus ones. We're going to stick with the two plus fives. So Burns will now play with Vlasic. Eric Carlson will be with Radin Simic on that second pairing. So I, I love the way this team, some of the star players on this team line up with what we have already on the roster or with what our coach has by default Nick D Simone there and that is our fourth straight win not bad after getting shut out we beat the Jets we beat the K well, actually fifth straight win I didn't even see that game against the Coyotes so 18 7 and 3 as of December 1st we are 10 points clear of the Golden Knights who are currently in second Despite some injuries, we have, and again, morale's on. We've had nobody complain thus far. The coach hasn't said anything. Knock on wood, that'll continue. It looks like people on this team have bought in, which is tremendous news for me. God damn. Let's take a look here. So we're atop the Pacific. You also have Vegas and Anaheim up there. Calgary's not out of it. Los Angeles is struggling a bit, though. In the Central, St. Louis, huge lead thus far. Winnipeg, Colorado, Minnesota, struggling quite a bit. In the Atlantic, Detroit. God damn. Meanwhile, Montreal, really struggling. It's goals against, too. But don't worry, it's not Carey Price's fault. It's just the defense in front of him. And in the Metro, Carolina, 
and Pittsburgh doing very well. Columbus and New Jersey with 23 points, not horrifically out of it. So just a look here, the Blues right now, the top team in the league. We are currently in third, the worst, Montreal. But again, it's everyone's fault. But carries goals for per game. We are second behind Carolina. Los Angeles, Edmonton, and New Jersey struggling in that regard. Goals against per game. We're not up there. It's been Montreal and Columbus struggling. And we are actually towards the bottom. There we go. All right. It's not too bad. Our power play at 22.4%, which is up there. Of course, we'd be tied with Anaheim. And our penalty kill, just a look at this, sucks. Okay, let's change the penalty kill. We're going to be a little bit more hands-on here, if we can be, just to stay on top of this and make sure that we are good to go. So let's see if there's anything we can change with the PK. With the power play doing well, it seems like we're good to go. And funny enough, you'd think the penalty kill would be doing relatively well. Ooh, okay, Goodrow and Swamala are apparently a plus three. That'll be the one change I make right there. That should help in theory. And obviously, with the injury right now, Simic's good to go. We should be okay. So let's keep moving forward. 7-2-1 and one in our last 10 games. Let's see what happens here over this next month. Hopefully we can stay healthy. We have for the most part. We'll see what we can do here. 3-2 win over Washington. And we can take another look at Central Scouting. It's fine by me. Uh, confirmed. Ooh. All right. Lincoln Henry and Braden Ortiz. Two generated defensemen at the top of the draft. And Lincoln Henry, a good point getter. They are basically the same person. Except Lincoln Henry's looking a little bit better. Char and Vlasic comparisons, huh? Obviously, we're going to be in no position to draft either of them, but hey, it's at least worth keeping an eye on. As we lose to the Hurricanes, we lose to Tampa. All right, this adventure into the southeastern U.S. not proven to be that beneficial for us. Uh, so Simic will be out. We will bring Mr. Dillon back in. And I think... We will make that change to get Burnsy back into a higher spot. Let's just double check the PK really quickly. And I mean, it's a four man power play. How's the five man power play looking? Still good. The PK is still looking good with Dylan there. So we'll see ultimately if that number ends up going up. Jones at a 904, Aaron Dell at a 913. So. We obviously identified goaltending as a weakness, and defensively, it was a bit of a weakness as well. You know, it made all the sense in the world to bring in the former Canuck, Ben Hutton, to not have Simic be, you know, in the top six for defense. We, we needed somebody else. Hutton was there. I just got lucky. Like, out of the group that was there, like Hutton or Dan Girardi, I chose Hutton, and yeah, he's a pretty damn good fit for this team. Uh, Blitchfeld. God damn it. Can you stay healthy? I'm tired of putting you back into this lineup. As, again, we will be taking out the veteran TJ Hensick. Blitchfeld's back in. And we are good to go. I really... I could optimize these lines. I feel like I should. I probably will. We'll see. Are they in the playoff spot? They're doing okay. I think when we end this episode just shy of the deadline, like we normally do, as Noah Gregor's hurt... I'll probably, you know, optimize that a little bit just to help them out. As we continue to win games hand over fist right now. 27, 11, and 3 as of January 1st. The Sharks are killing it right now. Absolutely killing it. We have a 12-point lead in the division, which is just tremendous. We'll take a look again at the playoff structure here. The Kings and Flames... Also, right now, would be in a playoff spot as you have the likes of Arizona that are just being left behind. 3.4 goals against per game. Their goaltending and defense have really let them down this season. In the Central, St. Louis, Colorado, Chicago doing well, but Dallas and Winnipeg in playoff spots. Minnesota still falling behind. In the Atlantic, Detroit, Buffalo, and Tampa. Toronto also in a playoff spot. But again, Montreal is just not doing well at all. And in the Metro, Carolina, Pittsburgh, Philly, and the Islanders there. The Rangers right in contention, but the Devils and Jackets out of it. 
already. That's pretty surprising. New Jersey, you know, it's, I mean, goaltending is a factor for sure. Columbus, it's definitely a factor. So around the league, we are still 1-2-3 with St. Louis, Carolina, and ourselves. The Habs, though, bringing up the rear. And it's just, it's been the goaltending and the defense that is the issue. So, but again, we all know who not to blame in that situation. As far as our team is concerned, and I take a quick look now that we've reached the halfway point of the season, Tomas Hurdle, 40 points in 41 games, 38 for Logan Couture, Vander Kane, 18 goals. His goal scoring really slowed down over the last couple, of, you know, last month or two, but still 35 points in 41 games. Timo's doing well. Marlow, 26 points in 32 games. Marcus Sorensen, I mean, 25 points in 41 games. He's on a 50-point pace. Is that worth having him on the top line for? You know, for the for the benefit of the plus five, probably. I mean, he's would he be a 50-point guy if we were to play him on the third line where he probably should be? No. So I mean, he's playing up to the level of the guys that he's playing with. So I don't hate it. Unfortunately, Thornton and LeBanc being on the third line is proving to harm them a little bit. The good thing is, uh, I mean, we'll see what happens. We're going to have to pay LeBanc at the end of the season, but it's likely. I don't know if Thornton and Marlowe will both retire this year. Probably not, but we are going to have decisions to make, and we'll, we'll see what happens with LeBanc, ultimately. Lucas Ardeal, 11 points in 41 games. Carlson, the same level. We'll probably just keep them the way they are. Swamala and Goodrow doing all right. And then again, Kelman, as a depth option, did pretty well for us. Defensively, Burnsy and Carlson both killing it. Both killing it. Say what you want about neither of them being on the top pairing, but it's working. Heed and Hutton working very well together on that top pairing. And, you know, I said I didn't want Redeem Simic to be, you know, in the normal, you know, six-man spot, or in one of the top six spots on defense, you know, one of the three pairings. Maybe he should have been <laughs> three points in six games and a plus five alongside Eric Carlson. Maybe he should have been in, but I don't regret bringing in Ben Hutton. If the goaltending steps up just a little bit more, we are going to be competing for a President's Trophy this season. No doubt about it. Tremendous start to the year. Around the league, let's take a look at Genny Malkin. Alex Ovechkin leading the way. McDavid's up there. Debrinkit, Marshan, Crosby, Larkin, Kuznetsov, and Austin Matthews. The top players right now. Barzell, McKinnon, Kessel, Tavares. Just to get a look at who's over 40 points right now. And I would say it's the usual suspects, really. God, I wonder what this team would look like with Joe Pavelski still being here. That would be very interesting if Joe Pavelski were to still be here. In terms of goal scorers, it is Ovi leading the way, but Johnny Goodrow, Patrick Kane, Crosby, Malkin, Matthews, Marshawn, McDavid, and Aho, Pavelski as well, have all hit 20 goals thus far. Defensively, Burns is leading the way, Dowdy's up there, Carlson of course, Jake Gardner up there for Carolina, Latang, Dougie Hamilton, Victor Hedman, the goal scoring leader right now, no surprise, is Brent Burns. And for goaltenders... Martin Jones is the winningest. 25 wins through 40 appearances. You see Jimmy Howard up there, though. Vassy, Carter Hutton in Buffalo. Top save percentages right now. Hadobin as a backup has been lights out. Bennington, I don't think he's been a starter necessarily. And you know what? I think in the, in the UDFA episode I recorded before this, I mentioned that the AI was a little bit smarter. And the example I was going to use in that is that, you know, the AI tries, tries to trade Jake Allen over Bennington. And I wonder if they're going to be successful in doing so. But amongst starters, I mean, Hutton. Hutton's up there, for sure. 31 games. Craig Anderson's up there still. Connor Hellebuck. And for the rookies, Capocacco. 29 points in 38 games. Steele, Hughes, not that far behind, though. Kirby Dock also in the lineup for the Blackhawks. The one thing I want to look at, because it's going to be controversial that Montreal's in dead last, is what the hell's going on with the Habs. Gallagher's doing well. 38 points in 40 games. Max Domi is doing well. 31 points in uh, 39. Philip Deneau, who of course people know I rate very highly. He's my favorite Hab. Uh, 31 points in 40 games. Tatar, Drouin. 
I mean, from a point production standpoint, you know, they don't have anybody who's competing, you know, for the top spot in the league, but they're not doing that bad. It's just defensively. It has been rough, and I'm sure Carey Price's save percentage isn't going to be great, and people are going to be very mad. Oh, Weber, Petrie, Kulak. I mean, it's not my fault that the Habs decided that having Ben Sherratt, Mike Riley, and Christian Folan was a good idea. But let's take a look. Whew! Now, that's not my fault, okay? That's not my fault. Jesus. It's so realistic. It's beautiful. Oh, God. Right where he belongs, his normal save percentage. God damn it, it's a beautiful thing. All right, so let's see. We are in January. Let's move a little bit closer. I mean, I don't want to sim straight up to the deadline. I know that bothers a lot of people when I do that. The thing is... Oh, God, if the Panthers are signing Neuvert, you know they're in trouble. The thing is, I really don't feel as though we're in that bad of a spot right now. I mean, heading towards the deadline, what's the one... Th I mean, is there anything more than goaltending that we're going to want to look at? I don't really know. I suppose maybe someone who's a little bit better of a fit on that third line would be a good pickup. The issue there is that it's never going to be a tremendous fit. You know, again, Thornton just, he, he's okay, but he doesn't really mesh well. It, it all evens out. And again, Kevin LeBanc's not a horrible fit. He just has the one, you know, the one X there. But again, in terms of additions, I mean, really, it could just be like, okay, maybe find a better third liner. And then, you know, someone like Melker takes a seat, maybe, or Radil. There's not too much we can do there. From a defensive standpoint, I think we're golden. The addition of uh, Ben Hutton to be alongside Tim Heat and then you know Dylan and Burns, it's just great. The one issue is the issue we knew we'd have at the start of the year. Martin Jones is not doing well. The issue is, I don't know if we could trade Martin Jones for anything. I genuinely don't know if it'll happen. Now, the one thing I haven't done is use the trade finder all that much in this game. So I'm intrigued to see, I mean, I guess what we'd be looking at, yeah, that's not surprising. That's not surprising at all. That's, that's a little bit rough. You know, I'm not sure, even if we go open block, no trades available even with an open user trade block. Jesus. <laughs> so yeah, there's just... I, I don't know what we'd have to do here. And bringing in another goalie who gets paid, I mean, cap space-wise, I honestly just think we're kind of stuck with Martin Jones right now. And that's a scary reality to be living in, but I think it is the one that we're living in. Because in terms of anything else we could add to this, I mean, the AI will be smart enough to be like, hey, add a draft pick, but if I even if I do this, there's nothing. Even if I say, hey, first rounder next year, there's nothing. So, I think we're stuck with them. There's not gonna be... Don't tell me the game crashed. Okay. A few moments later. Oh, so good news. Uh, I went to load the game back up, and it brought us right back to this screen. So, by some miracle, I didn't lose anything that I did. So, that is... I'm ending the episode right now so I can save this. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm scared to death that it's going to, like, semi-crash again. So we'll chalk this up as a win, and I will see you guys in the next one, where Martin Jones will still be a San Jose Shark.